So what we've done is we've taken everybody's questions, we've posted on our Facebook page, and asked you what you would like to answer, what type of questions you have about the industry, regardless of what's, you know, uh, product or processes or equipment, whatever the case may be. Right off the bat, uh, Maisha says this, what is the best laser printer that won't break the bank? Well, I'll be very honest with you. I'm not what you call a printer expert, not a laser printer expert. Uh, however, I have heard good things about uh, the Oki, um, also good things about HP, but I have no real history with those. So this is one of those deals where you're going to want to consult an actual expert. My suggestion would be to get on a forum. Uh, T-shirt forums is a great way to go. Uh, post that question on there if you haven't been on there already and ask them straight up. I'm looking for a laser printer that won't break the bank. What's, what's going to be a good one for me? But I will caution this. Don't go too cheap. You know, there are good printers that are affordable. There are not so good printers that are affordable. So you want to make sure that you're having a good quality print. Um, that's the biggest thing. So you can sacrifice a little bit of uh, quality sometimes by, by trying to go more affordable. Um, next one, Tom Johnson says this, OMG, I have so much trouble with 100% poly items scorching. I've tried Goof Proof for 100% poly, Elastoprint for 100% poly, and Premium Plus Vinyl for 100% poly. I have several shirts in this 100% that scorch even at the lowest temps. Nice shirts that would be premium dollars for me. Help me with material or manufacturers that have heat safe poly wear. Oh, an industry label for performance products, heat safe to 285. Wouldn't that be great? We would love that. And something we can kind of throw back to some of the manufacturer's connections that we have, saying that, boy, if you could just give us a, uh, a grade of your shirt, you know, safe up to this. I love that concept. That's a great suggestion, Tom. I will say this. Um, I know we can't push them to do that, and it's probably a bit of a risk for them to, to say that this is safe up to a certain temperature when you know, anything could happen, and they feel like they're at risk. But um, from our experience, uh, Sandmar makes a line of um, performance wear called Sport Tech, and that has done very, very well for us. It's probably the least susceptible to scorch marks. Uh, so turning down, the, turning down the heat is a big deal. There is another solution. Uh, it is a small investment, or a bit of an investment, uh, and that is the um, heated lower platen. And I'm going to slide over to the heat press here and just kind of give you a quick view of this. Let me get on this side. Excuse me. So what we have here is a heated lower platen. Now this is a separate unit from the standard and it works just on the standard clamp. So we've got heat here, we've got heat here. If you'll notice on the control on the other side, we've got that set to be around 320. So the heat on the bottom is actually, if it's going to scorch, it's going to scorch the inside of the shirt. And it's also drawing that adhesive down into the shirt. So it's actually helping uh, significantly for better adhesion. Now the recipe is 320 on the bottom, 250 on top. So 250 up here, 320 down here. That particular uh, combination has proven to work on a number of our materials. I'm going to go on the website here in just a little bit to show that list of those that we have. Going to need threadability. So you're going to need some sort of caddy so that you can actually slide this shirt over top. It already has its uh, quick slip cover, so it's going to glide on very, very nicely. And you pull it back. So remember, the most heat you're getting on the top, where you're actually seeing the scorch mark, is going to be uh, 250 degrees. So the chance of that scorching is very, very slim to nut. You know, couple that with a shirt that you know uh, has a good track record, you're going to be pretty successful. We'll go ahead and just lay this on there and give it a quick one. Ten seconds is all you need. The nice thing too, what I like about the heated lower platen, it's preheating right now. So when I load that shirt on, it's already preheating, taking the moisture and wrinkles out of this shirt. Actually, when I first threw this shirt on here, it looked like something came out of my laundry. Uh, but it has released the wrinkles very, very nicely. And then we'll just lock it down. I will also mention to you, if you do decide to get one of these, you do need separate circuits one for the heat press itself and one for the lower platen. So know that you need a 20 amp breaker for both of those. Something to consider, that you want to consider. Next question. What are the reasons a design might lift or peel after being hit, heat printed? Wow. Okay. Uh, so many right answers on this one or wrong applications. First of all, first one that comes to mind is the wrong material choice for the fabric. You know, every material, every transfer 
is designed to go on a certain type of fabric. So be careful, uh, something you may have may actually have nylon in it or you know, it's just no wrong match up there. So that's the probably the number one I would look at. Um, not following the proper application instructions, including time, temperature, uh, pressure, and the peel. Notice like we did with the uh, Premium Plus, um, it was actually a warm to cool peel, so we had to wait. Some folks forget that, that portion of it, but the adhesives these days have really evolved into be very, very, um, uh, they've evolved nicely to the point where they're more sophisticated, where one single temperature and time doesn't fit all anymore. So there are melt points to the adhesive where they have to hit, so making sure you've got the right time. Uh, of course, the, uh, well, that's the easiest one because everybody can work a timer or a counter, uh, but the temperature and then, of course, the pressure. And we'll talk about those next, um, well, soon. Heat press not accurate would be another suggestion. Maybe your heat press, while it says 320 on the screen, maybe if you actually tested what's actually being pressed, uh, it, could be, it could be off. It's out of calibration. It could be an older press. It could be a cheaper press. Something's wearing out. Uh, or maybe it was just never accurate to start with. So uh, one suggestion is we, you have the ability to purchase test strips uh, from, from stalls so we can get them through Hotronics as well where you actually lay the test strip on the, um, on the heat press, lock it down, and the, up to the temperature that, whatever temperature it is, it will turn black up to that point. So you actually see a little bit of a gauge there as what accurate temperature you got. So you can test your press that way. Make sure your, your press is accurate because it could not be reaching temp. Uh, one other thing is you didn't get the proper pressure because something was in the way. We always pull that collar off of the heat press, get rid of the buttons, the seams, all those different things. Those are very, very, very common reasons why a material would fail, why it was something that would lift. If, especially if you notice it and you say, oh, this, this team name up here seems like it's stuck at the bottom, but the top was, keeps wanting to peel away. Well, it's more than likely there was a V-neck or something there that they didn't pull off. So it created a little bit of a bridge and kind of spanned that area so we didn't get the full pressure on it. Um, or uh, there could be some sort of coating on the fabric itself. It could be something like uh, waterproofing or a stain resistant coating, uh, et cetera. They're out there, they happen. Again, a suggestion here is when you're preheating, if you see steam, that's moisture, um, that, or it is actually more likely it's, it's some sort of coating on the, uh, on the apparel itself. Most common with a synthetic fabric like nylon or even some polyesters out there. So you could have, a t you know, I mean, there's some, and there's like Teflon coated fabrics that are designed not to stain, but the nature of Teflon is nothing sticks to it. So that could be a problem as well. So those are all um, suggestions as to why something could fail. Another quick question, how can I tell if my cutter blade is dull? Uh, well, it doesn't cut very well. Now there's more to that. It usually shows up in the corners. It's like when I'm weeding something and I get into an inside corner and it's having trouble picking up in those areas and you have to work a little bit harder, that means that your blade is starting to dull, more than likely. Um, don't have to toss the blade immediately. You can bump up the pressure on whatever cutter you're using. Uh, my rule of thumb is if I actually double the amount of pressure that I usually start with, if I say I'm cutting fashion film and I'm usually at 80 grams of force, I start getting in that 140, 150 region because I keep pushing it up, it's probably time to go ahead and get a new blade in there. Uh, but don't confuse um, a bad cut. Um, not every problem you have cutting is, is blade based, uh, including like stitch cuts or skip cuts across, that, across the, the material, looks like it's a little dotted line. More than likely that is going to be either uh, your blade holder is not rotating, it needs either cleaned out or replaced, or maybe your cutting strip has a bunch of little grooves in it there and that's actually not getting the pressure every time it hits one of those little grooves. It is, uh, is great, appreciate you guys' time today. Uh, we look forward to, I, I had fun. I uh, hope we'll do this again sometime soon. I do wanna mention the morning show coming up this Monday, the 25th. Uh, we're gonna let Jenna tell you about how to merchandise like a pro. So tune in for that, it should be a good time. Thanks for your time, we'll see you next time.